Bradford. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To ask the Prime Minister if he will make a statement on his recent visit to India. Minister. Mr. Speaker. I thought we tra- treated women with respect in this place. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister visited New Delhi and Gujarat on the 21st and 22nd of April to deepen our comprehensive strategic partnership with India. The relationship between the UK and India is one of friends, partners and equals. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has shown the importance of greater and deeper partnerships between democracies. This visit enhanced our objectives on green growth, security and defence, as well as trade. Security and defence is a vital element of our growing partnership. The Prime Minister discussed next generation defence and security collaboration, including through supporting the Make in India approach to security and defence. They outlined a commitment in a joint cyber statement to deepen cooperation across cyber governance, deterrence and strengthening cyber resilience. The UK also issued an Open General Export Licence, OGEL, to India, reducing bureaucracy and shortening delivery times for defence procurement. This is the first for a country in the Indo-Pacific. Another priority is our trade and prosperity relationship. The Prime Minister agreed with Prime Minister Modi to conclude the majority of talks on a comprehensive and balanced free trade agreement by the end of October this year. UK and Indian businesses also confirmed more than a billion pounds in new investments and export deals, creating almost 11,000 jobs here in the UK. The Prime Minister and Prime Minister Modi discussed cooperation on clean and renewable energy, aimed at supporting India's energy transition away from imported oil and increasing its energy security. We launched a hydrogen science and innovation hub to accelerate affordable green hydrogen, as well as committing new funding for the Green Grids initiative announced at COP26. In addition, the Prime Minister also confirmed major new collaboration on science and technology. Ian Blackford with two minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to the, to the Minister for being here. But, of course, this was a question to the Prime Minister. And, Mr Speaker, there is a clear convention that Prime Ministers have a duty to update this House following their attendance at major summits or following significant visits. This convention has been respected and followed by all Prime Ministers in recent years. But like on so many other matters, the only exception to that rule is the current Prime Minister. Following his visit last week, the Prime Minister should have come to this House and given an update. He has once again failed to do so. Instead, he chose to go campaigning for his party in the local elections, though I suspect that won't do them much good. (laughs) But this Prime Minister failing to come before this House is by no means a one-off. He has failed to come before the House after the extraordinary NATO summit in March. There is a very clear pattern here. This is a Prime Minister who has no respect for the office he occupies and even less respect for this House. But now that the Minister has fronted up for his boss, let me ask her a number of questions. Can the Minister provide an update in terms of what discussions were had with Prime Minister Modi regarding the deteriorating situation in Kashmir? We all know how difficult and delicate this region is. It requires constant vigilance and attention. Putin's war in Europe is rightly our collective focus, but we must not lose sight of other countries and regions where conflict and violence is a constant threat. Can the Minister also give some more details on any progress that has been made towards a free trade deal? Reports suggest October is the timeline for its completion. Is that accurate? And what reassurance can the Minister give to our farming and crofting communities who have already been badly undercut by post-Brexit trade deals this Government has negotiated? And given the many concerns about ongoing human and rights violations in the country, what provisions will be made in any free trade deal to promote and protect our values? Finally, can the Minister give a guarantee that whomever the Prime Minister happens to be in the next few months, they will again follow Convention come before this House and give statements on significant visits.